specialist jackets, I will be giving to you a block of instruction on camouflage. With me, I have this small leader book. It's combat skills for a small unit it's leaders. So in it, it has a perfect example and explains perfectly how to apply and use camouflage. So camouflage, mostly, is for concealment and, and when there's insufficient cover or when you're trying to alter the appearance to throw off enemy forces, mislead them, but the primary use is to co protect yourself and cover, camouflage yourself when there's not enough cover or concealment to hide you. So you're trying to break up your silhouette and the shapes within your silhouette. They're not natural to the wilderness. They're unique and distinct. And for that, there's three, there's four different things for camouflaging yourself and individual equipment. The first one is to know what you're trying to camouflage with. What's the environment like? What are the shapes? What on your face is reflective? What on your equipment is reflective? To be able to know how you can prevent those reflections and those shapes from giving you, giving your location or giving away your teammates to the enemy, giving them away so that you are protected and secure. The second one is camouflaging your skin. So the camouflaging your skin is a little easier. So the easiest way to remember is high spots are dark and low spots are light. Low spots would be your eyes, around your eyes and your neck and somewhat of your ears. Your ears can be a mixture of both. High spots would be the eyebrow, your nose, and somewhat of your chin line around your head. I will demonstrate how to apply face paint after I give the two other instructions. So the two other, other, two other parts would be camouflaging your uniform and your helmet. So with that, you want to camouflage helmet with natural brush such as twigs, leaves, depending on where you are, brush if you can, as well as your uniform. You want to make sure that there's nothing reflective such as my pen. I would want to tuck that in to my pockets and make sure that it's not seen so that it's not reflecting off and giving away my position. Another thing is your weapon. Your weapon is super important. If your weapon is shiny, which is part of the fourth part, and it's part of yourself. So two and so three and four kind of go together. So four is the number four is your personal equipment. So this personal equipment includes anything such as weapons. It includes binoculars, uh, radios, backpack, anything. Your the most the thing that will most likely give you away would be a scope or a sight on your rifle as well as the rifle itself. So if you can, you want to put think, put brush sticks, anything on your weapon that will help camouflage it, but you don't want to put it in places that might prevent the weapon from, from properly working, such as putting it near the ejection port, near the trigger and magazine, um, well and guard. You don't want to put it interfering with your sights because if you can't sh if you can't see, you can't shoot, and your gun's just useless at that point. Your sight, that's a little harder. The army has come up with different technology with sights, such as the honeycomb. I don't have anything, but it's just a circle with a bunch of holes in it you put into a sight. Uh, it helps to prevent and block out the light. So that is the most easy way to camouflage your weapon. With your bags, there is different things you can use. Uh, you can use ghillie, not ghillie, but mesh tarping to cover equipment such as vehicles or your personal belongings. With that being said, 
to demonstrate how to apply face paint. So face paint, I will only, for this demonstration, I'll just apply it on my face. But when applying day, uh, face paint, it should be applied, it should be applied to your face, your ears, the back of your ears, your neck, your back of your hand, and anything that your uniform will not cover to help make help you to blend into your environment. Majority of the time, you will receive either a pack like such of paint or a stick of paint. The pack of paint has four different colors with a mirror, whereas the stick of paint has two colors, one on both sides. If I, were, if I was to recommend purchasing or receiving paint, I would recommend to purchase one of these. They have a lot more colors and you can make things look a, lot, a little bit better in regards to how you paint. You're not restricted to just two colors. So to start off, I will want to get my dark spots to apply this to my high spots. So such as my neck, such as my nose, and the back of your neck, you'd want to apply a mixture of dark and light. To your hands, mixture of dark and light. There's not a set of set color you want to do. You want to just break up the silhouette of your hands. So you want to come down with this dark paint, like so. Like so. Want to make sure that your nose is covered good, going all the way to your ears. You will then want to bring this paint around to your chin. Your chin is considered a high spot. Your jawline is considered a high spot because the silhouette from your chin to your neck is so drastic. If you want to apply this thoroughly and liberally, you will then want to apply a lighter color, which can be a mixture of these three colors, primarily the outer, the two outers, with a mixture of the inner. So you want green and a little bit of white help apply like such help break up the silhouette because you want the colors to be the same put a little brown in there to help change things up you can add some white in there which helps that break up silhouette for your lips since they are a bright red color you're going to want to use a brown more brown color to help color them without being too overbearing with it. You'll want to cover your eyes like so. To help break up the colors. You'll sometimes want to rub everything together. To help get everything blended in. Forehead. It is a shiny spot, but it is also a light spot. So you want to use a lighter color of face paint to help make get blend in with the rest of your face. With that you have your high spots and you want to just go in and verify that your high spots are dark so that you may blend in better. For your neck, you want to put different stripes such as one dark stripe right here and maybe a light spot here, light spot here, maybe a mid color right there. Your neck is to be blended. You want to blend your neck more fully as possible. And that is how you face, per, put, apply face paint. It's not the best, but gives you a great, a better understanding and demonstration of the importance of having dark outlining your face with light to help break up the silhouettes. Because as of right now, if I was in a more if I was in a more vegetated area, I would blend in much more than if I was in than if I wasn't wearing face paint at all. 
I'm Cadet Checkets and thank you for 